if you're a fan of the team that used to be the Cleveland Browns and is now the Baltimore Ravens, you know I had to mention that, uh, yeah, Miles. Um, it, it's it's Thank problematic. You. It's very problematic for the Ravens because, you know, I thought they had gotten past the blow the double digit lead thing, with yeah. Roquan Smith there, the defense getting better. I didn't think they were going to continue to do this, and now it comes back at the worst possible time when you're trying to establish and maintain your dominance or at least status in first place in the division and and fend off the Bengals. You can't you can't go to Jacksonville. All due respect to the Jaguars, but come on. This isn't quite the same as the Colts losing there in week 18 last year with the playoffs on the line, but you can't go to Jacksonville. Maybe they were distracted by the mascot in his, in the Will Ferrell Speedo, I don't know, but you can't go. You can't go to Jacksonville and blow a double digit lead. You can't go down there and lose that game. You can't. They were up by nine. It was two scores or two possession, okay. as I would okay. rather say. But it's Close the, to, it's I'm the rounding. same. I, I, I know. I know. And, I, and it's the same effect, right? I mean, whether it's 10 or nine, you should be able to win that game. If you're the Baltimore Ravens and you've made the moves that you've made. Again, you, you just mentioned you acquired Roquan Smith. This is the time where you're supposed to be over that stuff, you know, where you blow leads like that. You can't do that. You cannot come into this thing where you've lost three of your four games in the last 15 seconds. Regular, what are you doing? This is not the kind of Ravens team that we expect to see under John Harbaugh, who has been that head coach, who has won a Super Bowl, who has established a program there that has been good for a very, very, very long time. And so right now, if the Ravens keep doing this, to me, they're not a real Super Bowl contender. You cannot keep blowing leads like this when you have them in the fourth quarter and think, yeah, everything's going to be fine once we make it to the postseason, if we make it to the postseason at this point, because there's no guarantee that they're going to do that either. So, I mean, I, I, you know, you said, well, all due respect to Jacksonville. Like, look, this was a big time drive by Trevor Lawrence when they needed it. OK, and we haven't really seen that kind of thing very much from him. And there are a lot of reasons that that didn't happen last year. But this year, you expect him to take the step forward with Doug Peterson. Maybe it took a little bit longer than we thought to really see this come to fruition. But that's the kind of thing that you draft him number one overall for so that he can go in there and he can lead you to a victory like this at home when the chips are down, when you are behind. Who knows what this is going to mean for J Trevor Lawrence? and the Jaguars and Doug Peterson going forward, but at least for one day, that's exactly the kind of progression that you want to see from that team. I know, but the problem is when it happens, it's so sporadic. It's the kid who randomly shows up with straight A's, and while he's proud of himself for getting straight A's on one report card, the question is, why don't you do this more often? Like, why, why was it this nine weeks as opposed to all the others? And until you show consistency with performances like that, it's yes. not going to be regarded as anything more than an aberration. Yes. And that's, that's absolutely fair. But I, I think it's, I mean, the, the difference I would say with this is that we haven't really seen it much before, right? And, and Trevor Lawrence is still the young quarterback. He's still learning. He's still progressing. You know, it, it's going to take time for him to unlearn all the things that he was taught last year from that god-awful Urban Meyer regime. And with all due respect to the coaches there that are really good coaches, and I know that there were some, but it, it, when you have the guy in Urban Meyer who did everything that he did to ruin a culture – last year that really sets him back as a QB so I think now it could be that he's just getting more comfortable with Doug Peterson but also you have a defense that has tended to blow in two possession leads so it's kind of a combination of the column a and column b thing here and even after all that and look I got to give the Jaguars credit usually you know I there's a lot of factors that go into the question of whether or not you go for two in the final 20 seconds of a game, the final minute or two of a game, if a, right. a one-pointer ties it and forces overtime and a two-pointer wins it. General rule of thumb for me is if I'm the team on the road, I'm more likely to go for it than to than to play for the tie because I just want to take it and end it and get out of there because the, the home field advantage could, could be the thing that's the difference maker in overtime. And also if I'm the lesser team, if I'm the team that's not supposed to be there, if the other team is better – whatever that means, better than, than me, then I'm taking the opportunity now because if we extend this game, chances are they're going to wake up. And, and I think that's what motivated 
Doug Peterson yesterday in large part. Yeah. Um, and also there's other more nuanced factors like how do I feel about the plays I still have in my in my bag for this this two point conversion? Do I have one I really like? Do I think it'll work? Dare I use one that I've already used? You know, oh, well, you're not supposed to use a play again. Well, why it worked? Use it again. But how do I feel about the play I would use here? A bunch of factors go into it. But it was the first time ever, Miles, the NFL pointed this out yesterday, since they adopted the two-point conversion back in 1994, that two games the same week were won with a two-point conversion in the final two minutes. And actually, it was the final 15 seconds. Chargers over the uh, Cardinals with a two-point conversion in the final, in, with 15 left. And in that Jaguars-Ravens game, there was 14 left when the Jaguars got it. And there was still enough time for the Ravens to get in position for a field goal try that I thought was good. Didn't you think that was – I don't know if you were see, if you were seeing it happen as it played out, well, but when Justin Tucker kicked that ball, I thought it was good, and I was surprised it fell short. It wasn't just barely short. It was like a yard or two short, but I thought it was good when he hit it. Well, it was certainly online. I mean, by the time I saw it on my stream, you had already told us that it actually was no good. So I, I, I did know, not do that. I did bit. not do that. I did uh, not do that. Okay. Well, you spoiled, well, you that spoiled enough other things. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting purpose. a little confused. I know. Sorry, sorry, it's okay. sorry that I, as I sit here in my in my bunker in West Virginia, I have a yeah. real time fiber optic feed from all the uh, stadiums, and I see exactly what's happening as it's happening. Sorry. Yeah. Sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes you know you just give a little yeah. spoiler. That's okay. Uh, it's the way it works. It's the way technology is. But yeah, I mean, look, it, it was it was on target. Certainly, and that's what you expect from Justin Tucker. But, I mean, it was, it was a 60, what, seven-yard field goal attempt? Come on. Yeah. And it's not – he was upset with himself after the game that he didn't hit it because he felt like he could have. But, I mean, man, you know, it's not your fault, kicker, that you didn't put the uh, team in position to win. You know, you didn't give up fourth and five after having third and 21. So, I, you know, Justin Tucker can be upset all he wants to be upset, but – that to me is on the Ravens for not closing that game out when they had the opportunity to do it. That would have been something though to steal that win with and, and it's it oh, would have yeah. underscored yet again the value of Justin Tucker, future Hall of Famer, most valuable kicker in the NFL, a weapon that can be a difference maker for you from not anywhere, but you know what I mean, under any set of circumstances. It really didn't take much when the when the kickoff from the Jaguars after they went up one was kind of uh, and they returned it like out toward the 35 or 40. Chris Sims yelled out uh, because I've got a, a constant connection to the NBC viewing room on the weekends. I'm not there. You know, you, you go, you're you going to put him in a position where it's one completion and out comes Justin Tucker and he wins the game. And it mm -hmm. almost played out that way. But obviously it didn't. The Ravens lose. They fall to seven and four. And yeah, there's something I want to mention real briefly here. He deleted the tweet, which is good. I, and I understand that, you know, our Lamar Jackson's young, he's 25, and people get caught up in social media, and it's hard to not take the bait sometimes. I still give in to that temptation. You know, I go through the wrestling match between the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder. But, man, the higher the profile you have, and Lamar Jackson has as high of a profile as you can imagine in the NFL, you, you've just you've got to, you got to know when, number one, to not do it and then number two when folks are nudging you politely after you've done it to delete it it, it should be deleted more than or faster than three and a half hours after it was was tweeted I, i'd love to know the conversation to the full extent that led to lamar jackson finally deleting that tweet there was a vulgarity at the very end that we that we blurred out that it just it's and i i get it i get it you feel like you're being attacked we didn't show the tweet that led up to it. I don't know if we have that part of it, but a fan basically said, hey, this guy wants $250 million. He should be winning the game. We shouldn't have to trot out Justin Tucker. Let's let him go. Let's let Lamar walk and spread the money around to have a more well-rounded team. That's what he reacted to. You know what, though? If you're going to be on social media, you're going to get that. You're going to get that. And the vast majority of NFL players don't take the bait. They have the thick enough skin that they just let it roll off their back. I'm mixing my metaphors, but you get my point. And I think it, it makes yeah. it even more noteworthy when a small handful give in to that temptation to fight back. And again, it's, it's one thing to respond. It's another thing to take it a little bit too far. And he just took it a little bit too far. And, and I, I think there was, there was an effort by some in the organization to get him to realize that, that he went too far. 
And it sounds like eventually they did because he did delete it. But it was up there for a while. And, uh, uh, you know, there, 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 there's a stubbornness that you need to have to be a successful football player. And sometimes that stubbornness can carry over to other things. Well, look, I mean, there's the saying that, you know, you can delete your tweets, but the screenshot is forever. And that's obviously what it is because we just put the screenshot up there. And yeah, it's just, it's not a good look. And, and you, you know, you understand that it's an emotional game. It's an emotional time, especially after a loss like that. And the thing you got to do, just don't, don't pick up your phone, man. Don't look at the app, you know, I, I peak because people are going to say some mean, nasty, awful things. And it's just what they do. And, you know, whether or not you respond to it is your choice, right? You know, you can have a reaction and then you can have a response. And the reaction can be something else that doesn't go online. And the response a lot of times should just be nothing because there's not much good that can come from that. So it's an unfortunate thing. You know, I don't think it means that Lamar Jackson should not get paid. I just, you know, you, you no. wish that he could have no, had no, a no, different no, no. response in that situation yeah. or no response at all. Yeah, and I don't think no. you were saying that. But yeah, it's no, just, I'm not it's saying that at all. That yeah, I didn't think I'm not were. saying that at Sorry. all. Now, now the original tweet, that was the point. They suggested he shouldn't get paid for football reasons because right. they should be getting the game done without having to worry about Justin Tucker. There is the tweet to which Lamar Jackson responded. Let Lamar walk and spend that money on a well-rounded team. And it's, just, you know, the thing that makes it surprising, I, I mean, as the, the range of mean tweets goes, that's probably not at the worst of the right. worst extreme. <laughs> you're, you're right. There's far worse said all the time about anyone <laughs> who's got far worse said you know, about him yesterday. Yeah, exactly. So I, it's just weird that that's the one that really set him off. But the thing is, if you're scrolling through those and you're seeing him, you never know which is going to be the one that breaks the camel's back and gets you to respond. And it's such a it's such a poisonous reality, and it's not getting any better. I've compared it in the past to basically having, you know, a million people in the town square and they're passing around a megaphone, and you can hear what each one is saying at any given time. It's yeah. the it's the ability to vandalize, to spray paint you know, obscenities and insults on, on the, uh, you know, the front wall of your house whenever somebody wants to do it. And it's, and you know, if people, and the other side of it too, is I go through this with some of the emails I get from folks, I'll get these hateful, nasty emails and I'll respond to them in kind of a like funny way. And it's like, they're my best friend after that. Sometimes I feel like people just need to vent that they don't really mean it. They're just upset. And they think they'll feel better if they vent, that that's really not who they are. And I'd like to think that's not who the, who these people are. I'd like to think it's just a snapshot of a bad moment that evaporates and is gone. And that's not really who they are. My hope for humanity is that's the case, especially as we enter the Christmas season. Yeah, I, I could luck with that hope for humanity. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm probably wrong. But at least we uh, suspend those. We spend those bad assumptions slash realities about our fellow man during the month of December, which is creeping closer and closer. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.